We're going to take a look at connecting to an ESXi host using SSH or SCP. So if we've turned on the ESXi shell and we've also turned on SSH access to it, then we can use whatever SSH client you prefer to connect and access the command line of that host. Now you might want to consider using something like vCly or the PowerCly, which will actually give us a remote Perl or remote PowerShell environment. So I'm going to just open Putty and provide the details for my host. Now my hosts are ESXi, but I named them ESX, not exactly a best practice, but I'm going to connect to it and I've connected to this server before, so I didn't get a warning about its SSH fingerprint, but typically I would and I would have to accept it. I might want to do some comparisons and, you know, follow SSH best practices around those things, but reasonably simple for me. Now I haven't added any local users, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in as root, but we might have actually done the Active Directory integration. So you may be able to log in as something other than root here, either by creating local accounts or by using remote Active Directory accounts. Basically, VMware says, you probably shouldn't be in here and maybe you should have turned this off and there's lots of other alternative tools that you could use. Sometimes this is just what you're going to want to do because you come from a Unix or Linux background. I would stress that many of the commands you're used to are going to be very similar here, but the configuration of ESXi versus, say, a Linux host is quite different. All those commands like ls and cd and everything works, and it looks very much like a Linux file system, there are some differences. Let's head over to the user sbin directory, and if we do an ls, we'll see that we have a whole bunch of fairly standard Linux type tools, but you see we also have a whole series of VMware specific tools, you know, everything starting with ESX config, or ESX CFG anyway. We have ESX cli here, ESX top, and ESX update that we can use for different purposes. I'm not going to go through them all, but we'll see we have things like ESX config FCOE for configuring fiber channel over Ethernet or ESX config hardware iSCSI. Those may be able to help us work with specific areas of ESX or, for example, ESX CFG NIX will give us some information about the various NICs within our server. Reasonably simple tools, not that different than what we might have worked with in Linux environments before, but we're not going to be using IF config, for example, to configure these NICs. We're probably going to be using something like ESXCFG-VMKNIC to interface with VM kernel interfaces and change IP addresses that way. I'm not going to go through all the different commands, but I would like to show you a little bit about ESXCLI because it wraps a lot of functionality together into one tool compared to all these separate ones. So when I just launch ESXCLI, we can see that we have areas for things like fiber channel or for Ethernet here as well and for iSCSI and so on. So certain things that we may want to do, like for example, shutting down an ESX server or again, I should say an ESXi server or rebooting it using the system namespace here. And we can see that if I use ESXCLI system shutdown reboot or power off, then we can either do a shutdown or a restart of an ESX system this way. Although if it's in a cluster, then I really might want to use maintenance mode first, and we can use ESXCLI system maintenance mode in order to do that. We may want to get access to lists of our storage as well. So we'll see that there's actually quite a few things that are storage related that we might need to use this for. So if I run ESXCLI storage, then I can see NFS, VMFS, and SAN details here. If I use ESXCLI storage NFS list, I can get info about the NFS data stores that are available. We can also get information about the virtual machines. If we use ESXCLI VM, and you'll see we can get access to the various VM processes, which we'd also see through a tool like ESX Top. And from here, we can get a list of them and we can also kill them. We can do that in ESX Top as well. But if I wanted to here, I can get the world ID associated with different virtual machines, and then I can pass those as parameters to a kill operation. So that's a brief overview of some of the things that we can do within the shell. Typically, we're not going to want to be here and you're going to want to do things through the GUI tool, and there's much greater chance of operator error. But in case you ever are faced with doing it, this gives you a little bit of details as to how to do it. One thing I'd mention, if you're looking for things like startup scripts and modifying those sorts of things in the shell, that's not really supported. A lot of this file system is actually built every time the system boots out of this boot bank that we see listed here. Potentially, you can actually access the boot bank, mount the files, make changes to them. But you really should think about something like the management appliances if you're looking at doing something like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and log off. What we really should do is disable the shell when we're not using it, either for local access or also for SSH access.